So now I'm going to show you how to attach a button using your sewing machine. I'm going to show you how to do a two hole button and a four hole button. Okay. First, you're going to need the button foot, which is M, and it has the little blue thing on the tip. Don't take that off. And this is your darning plate cover. It's going to cover your feed dog. So gather up those two things and let's see how to put the button on. First, let's get the old foot off. So lift up your presser foot and it just pops off. You just press down a little bit and this old one comes off. I have this threaded with red thread on the top and blue on the bottom and it is already you know coming up. I've already pulled up my bobbin thread so it's coming here. So first let's put the darning plate on. You see the little um, hole right here? This little arched hole right here that's what we're trying to cover up these feed dogs because the feed dogs are what push your fabric through and we don't want it pushing any fabric through. So we're going to cover these up. Now some machines have the capability to just drop these down. This machine does not, so we have to cover them up. You're going to make sure that this hole here matches this hole right here. These two pegs right here at the bottom, they're going to go in the first holes right here on your plate, in these uh, first holes. So let's slip it right under there and it just snaps right in there. Now let's put the new foot on. The foot is going to go, you want the bar on the top here. The blue thing, the blue part goes in front. So lift it up, put that on there, and it just, when you let it down, it'll just snap into place. So now we are geared up for this. Okay, I want to put a button on this piece of fabric right where this hole is. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my fabric under there. And on that little blue foot, there is a tiny little mark right here in the center. So you want to line your mark up with that. Then we're going to take a button and we're going to slip it right under here. And believe me, this is a whole lot easier when your machine is not tilted up and there's not a camera in between you and the machine. So, we want that button snugged up in there with the holes. You can actually push them a little bit past the edge. Now we're going to check to see, well first let's get it set on the right stitch. You're going to use stitches two, three, or four. The only thing you have to do as far as setting your machine is over here on your dial, you're going to use two, three, or four. The only difference is how far, how wide the zigzag is. It's either going to be tiny or medium or go make a huge jump from side to side. And you're going to have to test it. So let's just start at three. That's kind of in the middle. I don't know if that's too large or too small. What you want to do is with your hand wheel, just roll it by hand. Don't use the foot pedal. And hold your threads out to the side so they don't get sucked up in there. And just ease it down and make sure that it goes into the hole on the left and the hole on the right. And just do it a couple of times to make sure the button is in the right position. If, it's, if the needle is hitting the hard part of the button, if it's not going in the hole, then you'll have to slide it one way or the other. This one, fortunately, worked out just fine as it was. So then all you have to do is on your presser foot give it a few back and forths till you get that secured. I'd say no more than 10, you know. 
Now, when you're finished, pick this all the way up, lift that all the way up, and slide it out. And then we can come to the side over here and use our thread cutter. And you've sewn your first button. Now, I told you uh, on the back, there's that. Now, to secure these threads, come around here to the back, give it a little tug, pull it just a little, and you'll be able to see a loop come up. You are pulling the top thread through to the bottom. Then, okay, when I pulled on this blue thread, which was my bobbin thread, the red thread came to the top. Now, this was the, the starter thread. The other thread, that was the one I started with. And you see, if I pull it, nothing happens. So that's how you know that's not the one that's going to pull to the other side. And then you catch that loop, pull it all the way through. Now, you can tie these in a knot, and they will hold. This one that's left on the front, you can just snip it off. It's well secured on the back, so just snip it off closely. So that's your first button. Now let's see how to put a four hole button on. Now we're gonna try a four hole button. Okay, I have my fabric and I have marked exactly where I want my button. So I'm going to slip it under my foot there with the, the uh, I'm gonna try to. All right, my hole is now, if your machine were, were flat, not tilted up like I have it, um, it's not going to slide out like that. Okay. Now, my hole is right there, lined up with this little mark right in the center of my foot. That's where my hole is, right under there. Right under there. So now, I want... Now, when you do a four-hole button, you're going to need to... If you're replacing a button, check the ones that are already on there because there are several different ways to sew the button. Look at your garment. Does it have them going... Does it have the threads going across from side to side, up and down from top to bottom, or is it going corner to corner, catty corner? So you want to match whatever's there. Otherwise, you can do it however you want to. Just be consistent. Now, I'm going to do this one corner to corner. Make the X in the center. So I'm going to line it up like this in a diamond shape. And I'm going to try to push this. Lift up your foot just a little, enough for the button to go under there. And... going to twist it around a little bit. Okay, I have it secured under there with one hole way out front and the two that I'm going to be going are right under the foot. And then I'm going to check my needle to see if it clears. It's hitting the right one just fine. Oh, it's hitting the center there. So, that means that my stitch is not wide enough. So, I'm going to stop where I am. I'm going to come over to my stitch selector wheel right over here. And since it's not wide enough, I'm going to go wider to the number four. Let's see if that helps now. I'm going to test it again. Perfect. All right, all I needed to do was widen my stitch a little bit. Now that it is clearing both holes, I can go to my foot pedal and gently give it a little bit of gas for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, give or take, ten, twelve stitches to secure it. Now, I need to turn it so that the other two holes are sewn. And you don't want to stretch it out too much because then you'll have a big loop in your thread. So I'm carefully going to lift up my foot and I, without distorting it any more than necessary, I'm going to twist it so that now the other two holes are in position. 
and going to test it. It's clearing the right, clearing the left, and then I'll go to my foot pedal and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Needle up. Lift this all the way up and slide it out. And then we're going to cut it off. Now, keep up with the threads that you just cut. These are the ones that I just cut off. So take, turn it over. The one that you just cut off, that's the one you're going to be able to lift up, pull up on it, and it will bring a loop of thread from the front. Sometimes it's a little hard to see, but it is there. And then I can pull that one up. That's what I'm going to tie in a knot. And then I can cut the, the other front one off even. And there's your button. Secure as can be. And if you want to, my mother used to put a little drop of, or a little dot of clear fingernail polish on the back. I don't bother with it, but... You can do that to secure it even more. That is how you sew a button on using the Brother 3817. Thank you for listening. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back to see me next time.